your life. Real quick, a third grade story. When Amir was on the third grade team, we yes, were please by, tell it. We were, we were down by one. I was coaching the team. Um, Amir stole the ball at half court, and his teammate was in front of him to score. Now his teammate hadn't hit a layup all season long. Oh boy. And Amir passed the ball to him, and the kid went in and missed the layup. We lost the game by one. We should have won one by one. I got in the car. I said, Amir, I said, man, I said, dude, when you when you get that, I said, great steal. I said, but you got to take that to the hole and score. <laughs> and I won't name the kid name, but he he said, but but he was open. Ah, oh, man. If he if he's open, Dad, I got to make the right pass right. And at, at, at in the third grade, what do you say to that? Right, right, and that's yeah, a, yeah. I love that, and I absolutely I loved a lot of things you said today. I mean, number one, Amir is his own player. I love that because in a lot of times in this world, you get into this whole comparison. And I was gonna bring up something because people like to tell me, "Oh, he's like Ben Simmons," and I'm like, "Well, okay, yeah. he's Ben Simmons yeah. that can shoot." That's number yeah, one. Yeah, um, right, but right, I 100 percent right. agree, and, and I, I, you know, we see it. You know, as fans, we see it. Amir is definitely unselfish. He wants to make that next move. You, you know, when he's out there, you're going. He's going to give you his best effort. Um, yeah. Richard, I can't yeah. thank you enough, and I always want to make sure my guest gives their outlets. And I, I've looked up. You know, I actually got in contact with you by visiting your website, RichardCoffee.net. Tell the yeah. audience real quick what you are doing, speaking wise, and. Um, and what it's what it's all about? Oh, for sure. So yeah, I have a have a, a speaking business called uh, Richard Coffee Unlimited. I go around the country uh, speaking to uh, corporate corporations and um, Fortune 500 companies and associations, and I just talk about personal professional development. You know, there's always another level for everybody. Everyone in this world has another level. It's uh, it's all about focusing on that next level and, and, and truly understanding how to get there. And you can't do that inside of your safe zone. We all have created safe zones for our life. We control everything in our safe zone. We protect everything in our safe zone. But the one thing we can't do is we can't continue to expand inside of our safe zone. we got to step outside of that. Mm. And sometimes that's a scary place for some people, but that's where you're going to find your growth. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, go Gophers. We're recording this on a Tuesday. I know it comes out on a Sunday. But let's get a W tonight, Richard, eh? We need one really bad. All right, Richard Coffee. It was Coffee, great timing everyone. to have Richard Coffee on this week with everything that's been going on with the Minnesota Gophers. Another team that was really dead in the water. And you thought there was no chance that this team would turn it around and, and make the tournament. And at this point, they are playing for a seed. They, you know, they, I think they pretty much are in after that Purdue win. You, you needed to win that game for uh, multiple reasons. For Richard Patino's coaching career, number one at Minnesota, not his career in general, but at Minnesota, he needed to win that game. You've been waiting for a statement win like that against a top-tier team, and, and Purdue was number 11 at the time. And if they would have lost that game, there is a lot of what ifs if this you know if they didn't make the tournament because you look at a couple of games and you think well there are two there were a game winner away from Michigan, you know Jordan Poole makes that that corner jumper to put up Michigan and, and the Gophers really battled in that you know the Nebraska one was a joke uh, he leans into Amir Coffee gets him up he doesn't I'm sorry he doesn't even get him up in the air they just call a foul and they lose to Nebraska they're up. 13 against Purdue in the second half. I mean, there's a lot of games where you think, man, this is a tournament team. And they came out and they did exact. I mean, they were uh, Amir Coffey. And like I've said a hundred times, and you'll hear in the interview, when he is able to make jump shots consistently and the defense has to play him out on the perimeter, he's one of the best scorers in the Big Ten. I mean, back-to-back 32-point games, that is not easy to do against Northwestern and Purdue. And that game at Northwestern was on the road. And this game at home against Matt Painter and a pretty damn good defensive team in Purdue. To go back-to-back 32 points in Kyle, that, that's tough to do. That's very tough to do. Uh, I thought Patino was great. I thought he's finally starting to understand the rotations in this team and the roles that need to be f- pretty much figured out. And I think he has. I thought Matt Sockman played a tremendous game. And I hope he plays more. I mean, you're, you're seven foot. You can do some damage in college basketball. There's no defensive three seconds, you know, and I know at this point, you know, the way the game's going, you're going to have to be able to to defend, I'm sorry, defend on the perimeter. Well, that's really pretty much the NBA. There's not a lot of 6'11", 7-footers in college that are able to put put it down on the floor like Giannis and shoot it like Steph Curry. I mean, that's just, that's the reality of the situation. I want to see him play Matt Stockman more. Um, You know, even Brock Stull, listen, Brock Stull, 
is he a liability on defense? Maybe, but he can make jump shots, and he's a senior, and he's a veteran guy. You know, he they really he really went deep on this bench, and and I thought Patino did a tremendous job at feeling out the game as well. And it got kind of tight towards the end, but listen, Purdue's a <laughs> Purdue's going to be a two or three seed in the NCAA tournament. There's no question about that. Depending on how they do in the Big Ten tournament, they could get a two. But the one thing that sticks out to me, and that is Isaiah Washington. And I, I don't like getting on a college kid because I, I played college basketball and I think it's kind of it's a little they're not pros so I you know they're not getting paid, but there's a trend that's going on, and that is when Isaiah Washington doesn't play, this team wins and this team is better offensively defensively. You look at the last three games, I mean that he was out in, Indiana they win, Northwestern they win, and Purdue they win. That that to me that's not that, that's not a coincidence now, and I've said it before to a couple of my buddies. I've, I've said the Gophers are a better team when Washington doesn't play because a lot of times he doesn't have any feel for the flow of the game. It seems like he takes shots that are out of rhythm, and you know defensively he's kind of, he's another kind of liability. So that's a that's another thing that I've kind of started to monitor. But um, nonetheless, Richard Coffey was a great, great, great dude. Really class act. I actually reached out to him. He does his public speaking, and he'll talk about that if you just heard. I actually went on his, his website, and I contacted him. And really great dude, obviously. We actually texted during the game against Purdue. Um, but it, it was a tremendous, tremendous job by him. And, and you know what I love? I love getting – and it's kind of weird because – I'm starting to get the athletes' dads. Yeah, I can't get the athletes. I can't get Will Greer. I can't get Amir Coffee. But you know what? I can get their fathers, and that's what I've been doing. And and it's, I think it's a it's a cool perspective. And the one question I like to ask is, you know, was there a moment with your kids where you knew they were special? And for Amir Coffee, he's riding a bike at one and a half. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah, people. Yeah, kids. Like not even walking by then. Is that is that true? Do they? Uh, yeah, like some kids don't even walk by then. I mean, it's like, and this guy's riding on a bicycle at one and a half years old. And the sacrifice that him and his two sisters, you know, put forth is, you know, shows. There's no, I always tell this to people. There is no secret to success. Like, there's, you can't, like, you know, I'm not going to wa- you know, wave my, my pixie dust over someone's head and you're all, all of a sudden going to be a great basketball player. There's no, there's no, you know, secret to this. You're committed. You put in the work. You've got a chance. And in this case, Amir Coffey, and, and Richard said it, at a, he said, I'm not, I'm not wasting any time. I, I know what I had to do to get to the, the NBA. I know what I had to do to get to the college level. If I have kids that want to play, I'm doing it. Amen to them. Because I do the same damn thing. And I hope I will. Anyway, go first playing for a seat at this point. Uh, I'm recording this on a Friday, so I know they play Maryland today, 4 o'clock Vegas time. Um... I'll definitely watch that. Not expecting a win. You know, Maryland is a very good team at home. They've got a. Uh, that, they're actually my sleeper. They came off a loss against Penn State uh, on Wednesday, and then I think they lost to Michigan or Michigan State. So they're going to come out. I, I'm expecting a very good effort for the Terrapins. They've got a really good big man in Bruno Fernando. They've got some good guards in Nick Wiggins and um, and some other guys that can really play. Uh, Anthony Cohen, a freshman, talented, and Mark Turgeon's done an unbelievable job with them. Watch for them in the tournament; they're a sleeper. So I'm not expecting the Gophers to have any. I, I, you know, like I said, I don't expect them to come out and win. They're seven and a half point underdogs today, uh, but nonetheless, the Gophers are in. And I've said this multiple times: we go through sp- these spurts, okay? And I hope it's not this. I hope we're like good for a couple of weeks, but we go through spurts in Minnesota sports where it's like. It, it, it can't get any worse. And it looked like it couldn't get any worse a couple weeks ago. With the Wild, who are just awful, who looked like, I said a hundred times, they looked dead. They had no, no reason to sell, to, to trade for anyone, to try to fix it, because they it was just boring. It was stale. They, 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 I think they got sick of each other. I think they got sick of the system, and you need to switch it up. The Wild were done. The Gophers looked like they were done. The Timberwolves are done. I can't even, I'm not even going to speak about them because they just make me so angry. But all of a sudden, a couple weeks, the Wild and the Gophers turn around. And we're going to get some March Madness basketball, which is always fun. I always found it really interesting. I always found it 
it's it's just fun. Like, you get, like, a different feel. Like, you, you Selection Sunday means something. It's not like, oh, yeah, Selection Sunday, but our big one is the NIT selection at 7. Like, screw that. We're in. They can win a game or two. I'm not saying they can get to the Elite Eight, but they can get to the Sweet 16, depending on seeds. They're capable enough. And as for the Wild, hockey is hockey. You got a hot goaltender. You got the teams playing well. You've seen it 100 times. A couple years ago, Wild fans can relate. Finished number two in the West. They had their best year probably. In, they had their best year in franchise history. That's a fact. And you thought they had a chance at the Stanley Cup. But you know what? They stunk towards the end of the year. They made two idiotic trades for Martin Handel and Ryan White. Screwed up everything. They couldn't win a game towards the end of the stretch. And the Blues were hot. Jake Allen was unbelievable. And look what happened. It's a fragile game. Great show as always. Big thanks to my producer, Brandon Morton, Jim Sue, and on, my, on the website if you want to uh, advertise with the show. I will talk to you guys next Sunday. Hopefully we can get Negative Day back on. Guys, just been extremely busy. Uh, but as always, have a good one. Talk to you guys 